ELF stands for Endoscopic Laser Foraminoplasty. It's a bit of a mouthful, I appreciate, but it is a keyhole laser-driven technique for patients with chronic back pain, multi-level disc degeneration, slip discs, instability, and those who have had failures as a consequence of previous open spinal surgery. The first problem is to accurately define where the patient's pain is arising from, bearing in mind that in many cases, the patient has degeneration at more than one level. The procedure is performed in the aware state with intravenous painkillers and sedation. But the patient is able to guide the surgeon as to the source of the pain, whilst he gently probes the doorway through which the nerves leave the spinal canal which over the years, you as patients have shown us is where the pain seems to be arising. Only in a very small number of patients is the disc itself the source of the pain. In our hands, analysis has shown that this technique increases the accuracy of diagnosis by as much as 20% or more. Once probing has been completed, dye is inserted into the disc to show where in the disc the degeneration is occurring and to see if the disc is leaking for this too may be the source of quite potent pain and needs to be addressed. Once the source of the pain has been defined from patient feedback then the endoscope which is after all just a very small telescope is run down the guide wire to where the nerve exits from the spinal canal. Over the years we have found that that is the main site for the source of pain. Once the endoscope has reached the foramen, one sees all the ligaments that occur there naturally, but usually additional scarring. This has to be cleared, as you'll see in this clip. After clearing away the soft tissues, the bone margins of the foramen are gradually displayed. Above is the facet joint margin, and the nerve is running from 3 to 8 o'clock. The zone is constantly flushed with saline and the side firing probe is seen cutting away the impinging facet joint to relieve the nerve of pressure and impaction and allow the surgeon to gain access to the anterior part of the spinal canal. The laser cuts bone precisely to a maximum depth of 0.2 of a millimeter this therefore renders it safe, not only because of its cutting depth, but because of, you can direct the beam away from the nerve. Having started to release the nerve in the lower part of the foramen, shown to the left, clearance proceeds gradually to the right until the lower portion of the ganglion is displayed. All the time the laser beam is projected away from the nerve. And the patient can tell you if you're pressing on the nerve and producing any pain. This means you have to be very gentle. And this, I believe, does help with long-term outcomes. The X-ray of this case shows that the disc space opposite to the working tube has virtually disappeared through degeneration and would normally be treated by fusion. And in the frontal picture, large bone spurs project from the side of the vertebrae. The endoscope is elliptical and rotated counterclockwise to gain access to the apex of the foramen. Here we encounter the superior foraminal ligament, obviously densely attached to the nerve, which is irritated at this point, and the site of long-term vascularized adhesions scarring. This ligament acts as a guillotine on the nerve and must be trimmed back. This is difficult to achieve from the conventional midline approach because of access and lack of line of sight. The x-ray shows that the working sleeve is gradually advancing through the foramen as clearance and decompression is achieved. With the nerve cleared in the tunnel of the foramen and along its length, attention turns to the disc itself. The inner margin of the nerve is seen passing from one to six o'clock and the degenerate disc is seen as a shiny, silvery surface, 
with the brown discoloration of advanced degeneration. The endoscope rotates for axis and the nerve pathway is now falling along a line from 3 to 6 o'clock. The laser probe is replaced by a guarded knife which is inserted into the disc. Normally when the disc is better preserved the working sleeve would be advanced into the disc so that manual and laser clearance of the degenerate and irritating material can be removed under vision. Here access is limited and the disc wall fibrotic. Rather than disturb the stability afforded by the internal scarring, the laser is inserted to ablate the breakdown products and to shrink the redundant disc wall. Small manual graspers are inserted to remove loose disc material from within the disc space.